What's up guys, Fallout 76 is about to take a massive leap into the unknown direction and it's got me a bit weary and excited for what's about to come. So I took the time off to analyse each interview that Fallout 76 uh, creators have made and I put all of the information into some easy bullet points which I'm going to go through. I've done this as accurately as I can so sorry if I do get some things wrong or I don't include something. Uh, so to keep it sweet and short, I'm going to be separating the video into two main topics, what's coming and what the community wants. So let's get straight into it. So the first new addition to Fallout is obviously going to be the new map. 76 will now have a map that's four times the size of any other predecessor to the Fallout games. With that new map comes with new buildings, new locations and I assume in the future DLCs will also add on to that map. So this map is going to be extremely large, it's going to be well made for solo players so that they can keep to themselves and explore by themselves and it's going to be a great place to explore with your four man team as well. The second quick point on our list is that the game will not be available on Steam. Uh, instead it's going to have its own launcher which is pretty standard for MMORPGs nowadays. Since the game is so big, they're not going to be uh, available on Steam and because of that there won't be many Steam sales or any discounts usually people see and PC players enjoy quite a bit of. So instead you're going to be paying the full price on its own launcher and its own website. Now to put the solo only players at ease, the game will still have an amazingly rich story and the quest lines will still be available and just be as good as a normal Fallout game. However the quests will now mainly be available through NPCs a little bit and mainly through holotapes, terminals and robots. Player interactions in Fallout 76 is going to be mixed. You can still play alone and you don't need to worry about people killing you. You can stay absolutely by yourself and completely harm free all the way to level 5. And after level 5 you can obviously be shot and killed by other players, but there's also something addressing that in the next further points I have. Killers will now have large bounties on their heads if they do kill on sight, which will always make them think twice about shooting you. Now the next point is probably one of the most game defining points and that's that there's a new system of building called CAMP or C-A-M-P. You set up how it works in Fallout 4, you build, but the main twist to this is that you can move your buildings to different servers and easily move it to different locations. If you see a hill up there and you want to put your base there, that's fine, you can easily move it. You can also get raided and um, it's not like how you think, you like your base won't be destroyed completely, but your base will be damaged, but that's easily repairable. Now the next point should give an ease of relief to all the stealth players. Stealth playing will still be available in this game. You can crouch down and if the icon goes down to a shut eye, the enemy players and enemy NPCs won't be able to see you. So whether this means you can perform stealth kills and multiple damage, we'll have to see when the game launches. Fallout 76 Online will of course have its fast travel online fast travel that is. Fast travelling works the same as it does in all the other previous Fallout games but this time it costs caps to go to different locations. However going back to the vault which is where you start it's going to be free but a bit risky because other players will most likely be there as well. Nukes are already going to be in the game and everyone's already heard this, you probably saw this in the trailer as well. To get the nukes you need codes, you can get codes from high level enemies that you've killed and other players. By combining them together you have the ultimate code and you can go to one of the bases across the map and launch the nukes and area. The nuke once hit will detonate and of course obliterate everything in the surrounding area. The atmosphere will change, the weather will change, enemies will become different, harder and stronger enemies will appear. However, this also means better loot will be dropped and rare weapons which you probably wouldn't be able to find normally would be found through these high level enemies. Trading in Fallout 76 will probably be the same as it has been for number 4, 3 in Vegas. You can still trade with NPCs but now you can also trade with online players. 
by this you can go up and set up your own vendors, you can have your own vendors, uh, machines and other NPCs that do the trading for you. You can make your own empire and become rich as fuck from this. So this is a pretty cool feature that they've added in the game. People have been wondering how online will change VATS. VATS is going to be a bit difficult to explain because the devs themselves were very vague and they weren't giving the right answer I was looking for. So the best way to really explain this is that VATS is going to be the same as uh, Virtual Reality Fallout. I haven't played that but from what I'm assuming, VATS will work as an auto-locking feature onto a body. So if you VATS into someone's head, every single time they pop out, you'll probably be aiming directly at their head. So it's kind of like a aim assist feature, that's how I'd imagine the VATS be. Being a soft core survival online game, Fallout 76 is obviously online and with that comes PvP. PvP works a bit differently as it does for any other game. There's going to be some sort of slapping system. So how this works is when an online player shoots another player, the other player that's been shot has a choice of ignoring or engaging in combat. If they engage in combat, both sides of the parties will do a full damage to each other. If they ignore, they can still run away from that. So I think that's pretty cool and you can still get into PvP battles and choose not to as well. The game doesn't just stop at Fallout 76, they've also said quote unquote there will be DLCs for years end quote. As the devs and directors have said this means the Fallout map will be extended, new enemies, new weapons and possibly DLCs as we saw such as Far Harbor, Point Lookout, you know and all those DLCs will probably be in the game as well. So I think that's pretty cool that they're going to add DLCs further in the future as well. Being such a large map and such a large game in general, Fallout 76 will contain servers full of people. The max amount of people it can contain is 30 people and your squad can be as large as 4 people. This is a golden amount of people because every interaction a player has with another person in the map will be very unique, special and one of a kind. Not more of the IC players every single time. Everything will be unique and just about right. Fallout 76 will also contain a system of thirst, rads, and a new type of... I can't really explain it, but it's called mutation. Mutation is going to be much different from rads and thirst. Mutation actually transforms you. So you can transform into... I think one of the uh, traders had like a kangaroo person, so you can have extra jump or something like that. There's other, uh, other mutations in the game, and most of these mutations also have ups and downs. So with mutations, you could probably become immune to rads, but say extremely thirsty all the time, or uh, very weak in the night and powerful in the morning, or vice versa. So muta mutations will have like their perks and their disadvantages as well, which I think is insane. And I really am looking forward to the mutations to see what a player can transform into and what the perks are going to be as well. A quick short point is a bit of rejoice for the modders. Uh, modding will be supported after launch in Fallout 76, so plenty of opportunities for modders to add new things and experiment in Fallout 76, which I think is really thoughtful and I think is, you know, the backbone of Fallout, it has always been modding, so this is really cool for them to add, especially in an online game. Being so large, Fallout 76 will have a large array of new enemies and some old enemies from previous titles. Some of the new enemies will be mythological creatures and enemies from the native Virginia that this game has taken inspiration from. So this is very exciting to see that new enemies and old enemies will be making a comeback and a arrival in the game and I look forward to some more colossal enemies, uh, especially the new monster that looks like a brawler, the white little fuck knows what it is, but that's going to be pretty cool. Finally closing it in for what's coming to the game, uh, it's going to be a soft core survival game so weapon durability will be in the game but it's going to be very light, um, death is going to feel like a tap on the wrist or slap on the wrist should I say, you won't lose all of your stuff, you won't lose all of the stuff you've been grinding for, all the caps that you've finessed, it's going to feel like a proper fallout game, nothing is going to go to waste, even when people go raid your base you won't have everything destroyed, easily repairable, you can simply respawn back, collect your stuff and you won't lose any of your 
important items which is I think very cool for online players and the people that prefer just being by themselves so that's really thoughtful Fallout to add. In the last segment of this video we're going to be talking about what can be added into Fallout 76. One of the cool features I'd love to see is clan walls. I think it'd be interesting to see how the bases would be made, how people would engage, especially in the combat system in Fallout. It'd be interesting to see how large groups would be fighting each other, how weapons such as a fat man or missile launchers or vertebrates if there are any, how, would, how they would be used and you know your companions and all sorts of things. I think it'd be very interesting to see how that plays out. Carrying on from our second point, I think vertebrates should make a return into 76. Um, I'd love to be able to control them as well. I think they definitely need to because the map is so large, there is no other transport. So I think if you throw a flare, you should definitely be able to get a vertebrate. Even better, be able to control it. One thing I've been hoping for the longest time is giant monsters. I think 76 could definitely do with a behemoth if not like a gargantuan or you know something very large like quite a few different races of monsters like a maybe maybe for super mutants as behemoth for the for the sloth monsters like a alpha sloth or something you know something cool like that i think uh, the game definitely lacks uh, large scale monsters and i think it'd be pretty cool taking them down with all of his squad mates using the uh, fat man and missile launchers and whatever maybe even nukes like i'm talking massive so that'd be very cool if they could have that A pretty interesting thing I think needs to be added is um, combining camps. Uh, so being able to combine your settlements with other players and your friends. I think this could be especially useful if you're in clan wars and you want to combine the settlement you already have with someone else to make a bigger settlement to uh, defend. Uh, that obviously means there's going to be more weapons from the other players and stuff. So I think that option is definitely needed in 76 uh, since 76 is going to be so surrounded around building. The next point was kind of given by a very upvoted reddit comment about sneak killing. I'm not too sure about this but a lot of people did want sneak in the game and sneak is definitely going to be in the game but how you can use it and whether sneak killing will be available is something we don't know about. I think it'd be pretty cool to one shot people while you're in sneak but obviously sneak has to be very high but I'm not too sure about that, I'll leave it to you guys to decide. You can't be talking about Fallout without mentioning the power armor. Power armor customization was available in Fallout 4, but I think 76 needs to make a bigger jump into more customization for it. So maybe adding on the LED lights and the Enclave armor from Broken Steel Fallout 3, or new modifications such as explosions when the character is very low, or, you know, something clever like that. So I think 76 definitely needs more customization on the power armor, even more than Fallout 4. Taking the animal friend perk from the old Fallout games and adding it into the new 76 would be really cool. But this time I think something new like the ability to control monsters or recruit monsters such as Yaogwais, Milux, Moth Monster, the Brawler, whatever it's called. And you know any of the new monsters that are in 76, I think it'd be pretty cool if you were able to recruit those as well. Now second to last, I think big cities to explore and plenty of enemy outposts and holdouts like the one in DC Washington, um, Fallout 3, the super mutant controlled one, that was really cool, you know the trenches and the big fucking mercenaries fighting the um, super mutants along with you, uh, something like that in the big cities definitely needs to be added, and I, it'd make a unique experience to have some urban combat as well. Lastly, I think a friendly solo experience is definitely needed. How they add this, it could be from a perk that gives you pacifist abilities or something similar. It's completely up to the the devs and how they make that. Because I've seen a lot of people aren't too keen at all on having a fallout online with other people. So I think that's definitely needed to keep that market of people happy as well. Actual nuclear secrets are. So that's it for me in this video guys, 
Fallout's going to be dropping in November time, so be sure to get it. And we'll see how things turn out, what things are going to be added, and what things the mods are going to bring. And we'll just see how the overall game is then. But I'll see you guys in the next video. And we even use the folklore of West Virginia to bring our Fallout versions to life.